I'm 36 hours off of a flight from Thailand. I've spent the last month talking about winning well in Southeast Asia. And what I thought was so interesting, wherever I went, this is a group of senior level executives, and I asked them to write down what their biggest leadership challenge was on this, these paper airplanes. And when you open them up, it was all related to having tough conversations. And then I went to the university and I talked with these students and I said, what is your biggest leadership challenge? And they said, talking to my boss. And then I had to take a, 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 an ox cart to, actually to get here and use a translator and I asked, what's your biggest problems? And they said, clean water and medical care. And then having tough conversations with my family and my community. This is a universal issue. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and bet you're having trouble having a tough conversation or you're putting off a tough conversation or you regret the way a tough conversation went in the past. So I'm going to share with you some tools and techniques that will help you have better conversations. So I'd like you to write down, what is one tough conversation that you are longing to have and would have if you knew you had the tools to use it effectively? Now I want you to turn to the person next to you and no, I'm not gonna have you tell them what that is because 37 and a half percent chance is that you're sitting next to the person that you need to have that tough conversation with. <laughs> but I want you to turn to the person next to you, the one on the side, you know, the one you find most attractive. <laughs> and say, I have something important to say. Ready? I have something important to say. So this is my son, Ben. And I share this story with you because before you can have a tough conversation, the most important thing to do is to set very clear expectations. So Ben asked me to come take pictures of his last marching band game of the season. Now this is a great job for a mom like me who loves her son and hates football. So I, I go running up to the stadium. I, I'm all excited. I, I watch, and the, it's halftime. I didn't get there too early. And the band is just coming around the track. And I hear the cadence. And I go racing down to the 50-yard line, and I set up my tripod, and I start taking pictures. I got some great ones. I got a picture of him and his love interest just crossing right in front of one another. I get home. I upload all the photos, I do the Photoshop thing, I've got them in a PowerPoint presentation, I'm sipping a cup of tea when he walks in the door, and he says, oh, that one's pretty good. Yeah, I like that one. But mom, did you get a picture of the guitar? I said, Ben, you play mellophone. He says, at the very last seven measures, the entire band walks into this formation of a giant electric guitar. Did you get a picture of that? I had completely missed the big picture. It happens at work, too. Your team is working hard. They're trying to do their best. And sometimes they're working on the wrong thing. Has that ever happened to you? One good conversation about expectations prevents 14 why didn't you conversations. So before you start and have a tough conversation, take a step back and say, am I positive I've made my expectations perfectly clear? One of the things we talk about in organizations when we do work is mind the MIT, mind the most important thing. What does that look like? 
So I'm working with an oil company, and they said, Karen, can you come in and do some customer service training for us? I said, okay, sounds good. What does great customer service look like? And they said, oh, that's easy. And they handed me a checklist for their call center of 50 items that the people on the phone were supposed to take care of to provide a great customer experience. Use the customer's name seven times. Make sure you get their email address, all these things. And I said, you don't want me to train this. Took the executives in a room and I said, what is the most important thing? And we spent a couple of hours and then we came up with three things. Does the customer know how much we care? Empathy. Do we give accurate and timely information about the right things? And was there a wow factor on the call? I said, great, that's what we're gonna train to. We redesigned the forms, asking those three questions only, put everything else at the bottom, and I said, if these other things become an issue, coach to that. But right now, we're gonna focus on three things. Their customer experience improved exponentially. What's the most important thing for your organization? What is the behavior that if consistently was done every single day would make an impact? If you are a manager, this is an easy way to have this conversation with your team. You say, what was the most important thing you did last week? What's the most important thing you're gonna do this week? And how can I help? If you have that conversation every single week, you'll be absolutely sure that they're focused on the things that you think are most important. And you're giving them an opportunity to share with you their successes. And you have the opportunity to uncover roadblocks. So why am I so passionate about tough conversations? I learned about this the hard way. So I know you're distracted by the slide because you're saying, Wow, she has not aged a bit in 20 years. <laughs> so this is me and this is Ben again. And I had just been promoted to my very first executive job in human resources. All the players were new, a new head of HR. And my very first assignment was to build a diversity council. So to bring people from all over the company, engineering, sales, customer service, to Manhattan to have a conversation about the diversity problems we are having in the newly merged organization and what our new policies should be. I thought everything was going really, really well because I got people talking. There was a gay man on the council and he came out for the first time. And there was an African-American woman named Sharika who was a big, bold leader. And she said, you know what? Despite how good a leader I am, I have been discriminated against, I'm sure, at least three times. And I listened and I encouraged and I thought, this is going so well. And then the week before we were about to deliver the diversity strategy to senior leadership, Sharika bursts into my office. Girl, you are a fraud. I knew exactly what she was talking about. Because although I had been so encouraging of everyone to tell their stories, what I had not shared was that I was a single mother. I had recently gone through a divorce and I had not told a soul because I was terrified I would get discriminated against. You sat here through this whole time and we talked about all the plans for single mothers and not once did you admit that you are one. We don't trust you. Our strategy was incomplete because I was afraid to have the tough conversation, to say, you know what, we're doing all this work for the front line and we're not talking about another real issue, which is that executives are afraid to be who they are and everybody is watching. 
We had to change the strategy. I had to go back to the team. I had to share my truth. We had to shift this conversation and make sure that it in included every level of the organization. And that was the strategy that really changed the culture and won a Verizon Excellence Award because it made an impact. This is what I call ditching the diaper genie. I hear some chuckles. Anybody know a diaper genie? Raise your hand if you're familiar with a diaper genie. Yeah, what you do with a diaper genie, right? You take a stinky diaper, you put it in this genie, you give it a twist, and the plastic wraps around it so tight, the poop doesn't stink anymore. I say this so I won't get sued by Playtex. Diaper genies are a great invention for parents. They are terrible at work. It's tempting, right? We've got bad news. We've got bad news. We've got to tell our boss. We're a little bit scared. We stick it in the diaper genie. We give it a twist. It comes around, and then we give it to our boss, and it doesn't smell so bad anymore. It goes in the other direction, too. Senior leaders, oh, we got some bad news, but we don't want to scare everybody. We want to keep people's eye on the ball. We're not going to, let's put some talk points and maybe even a little fake news before we share it with the front line. Strong organizations ditch the diaper genie. So this is a model that can help you have the tough conversations and to help you plan for the tough conversations. It's called the INSPIRE model. Now, I'm going to take you through what if Sharika had used the INSPIRE model. Although I learned a great deal from Sharika, one can argue she could have given her feedback a little more effectively. Right? I, initiate. Hey, Karen, do you have a minute? N, notice. Now, very deliberate in using the word notice because you can only notice a behavior, you can't notice an attitude. I've noticed that although you're encouraging other people to share their experiences to inform our strategy, you have not shared anything of yourself. And I noticed these pictures on your desk of uh, you and a little boy. I think you're a single mom. S, support. For example, Michael came out, and that helped us have a stronger strategy. I shared how I had been discriminated against, and that helped us have, our str have a stronger strategy. What, do, what aren't you sharing? Probe, what's going on? This is the most important part because now you're getting them to come up with an examination of their own behavior, the behavior that you're looking to change. I invite. Now you invite them to come up with a solution. You invite them to come up with ideas of how they could change. Karen, what do you think you should do? Review. R, review. Here's where you review the solution that they came up with. Great. So at our next diversity council meeting, you are going to share a bit about your situation, and we'll talk about how that can inform our strategy. E, enforce. Here's where you set a follow-up appointment to talk about the behavior change. So I want you to think about this model, the INSPIRE model. It's a very useful way to plan for the tough conversations that you're needing to have in advance, and then to use while you're having the tough conversations. I learned a couple of things from Brig. First, she had the ability to see a future leader where all I could see myself as was a disengaged potential dropout. 
but she also had the courage to strap on her skates and roll beside me and find out what was going on. There are disengaged people in every organization. I know you have them. Sometimes what they need is an inspire conversation. Sometimes they need clear expectations and to be held accountable. Sometimes they need to be refocused on the MIT, the most important thing, and stop the distractions. And sometimes what they need most is for you to strap on your skates. My hope for you is that you will take the time and have the courage to have the tough conversations you need to have with yourself, to have the tough conversations you need to have with the people you care about on your team, to have the tough conversations you need to have to own the ugly situations that are having, happening in your organization and ditch the diaper genie, even with your boss. And most importantly, to have the tough conversations that you need to have to help and encourage and inspire the people you love in your family and in your communities and to help them to grow. That's winning well. Thank you.